Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning. My name is Matthijs de Vries. I'm a founder and uh, CTO of Alliance Block. And uh, Alliance Block is uh, a DeFi infrastructure provider. So we build infrastructure for uh, DeFi projects, for Web2 companies, StratFi, institutional to um, enter the world of Web3 or DeFi um, using our building blocks. And an important factor of what we do is that these building blocks can be used to enter DeFi uh, compliantly. Um, one of our, uh, our foundational protocol, Nexera, it's um, uh, based on a meta NFT at its core of the protocol, which is basically a dynamic data container um, that uh, uh, stores your activity on chain and um, can be used to build a lot of use cases uh, quickly on top of that. One of the use cases that we built on top of that is Nexera ID. Nexera ID is a self-custodian, self-sovereign identity wallet, um, which allows easy programming of business and compliance rules. Um, one of uh, its really cool features is that as a user, you have the ability to um, uh, uh, generate verifiable credentials, um, uh, zero-knowledge proofs, to prove that you have a certain um, uh, a property to at attached to your identity that you can use to uh, do compliant on-chain activities without revealing your actual identity. So that's uh, a couple of the cool things that we do. We also have a DAX and uh, an interoperability bridge. Um, but today we're going to speak about um, tokenization of real-world assets. And uh, we have a small group today, and uh, I wanted to make this a little bit interactive. Um, we're not going to go to work, but I want to ask you a lot of questions today. And um, my first question uh, to all of you is, uh, who, who owns any NFTs? Okay, okay, perfect. How many uh, of you hold an NFT that's represented, representing a real-world asset? Okay, that's cool. Um, did you um, uh, own an NFT representing a real-world asset once that uh, you managed to sell already? No, I didn't, I didn't sell it. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, did, did, did any of you ever think about owning an NFT that represents a uh, real-world asset? Okay, um, uh, can I ask you uh, and, and bring you the mic, uh, why, um, why you don't have one yet? Why you don't have an NFT that represents a real-world asset yet? I think uh, security, you know, and also like the, just, I haven't found much platforms really that I feel com comfortable. You know. Fair enough. So, uh, lack of security and not a lot of platforms around that, um, that seems trustworthy enough to, to deal with it. Yeah. Or maybe lack of knowledge of the technology, how it actually works. Okay, okay. Any other thoughts around this uh, topic of owning an NFT representing a real-world asset? So why you don't have one yet? Yeah. Availability. availability, yes. And any thoughts of why this might not be available? So it's, 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 it's new and uh, technology-wise, not everyone understands how to get the real assets onto the chain. And, and, and what, what do you think are the reasons why it's so difficult to not um, uh, get this real-world asset on-chain? Well, what could be like kind of the barriers? I mean, security, again, the previous uh, audience under the security, right? Is the real worth the real asset? A real asset, I can touch it, I can see it, but on-chain is uh, abstract. Right? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. You, you raise your hand briefly as well. Yeah. Like, I want to make sure that the house that I actually buy and I spend a lot of money on is legitimately connected to that NFT. And if I transfer that NFT, like, how does that house get transferred? Like, does the government recognize it? Ooh, I'd like to know that for sure. And also, no one's selling houses in, in Amsterdam uh, with NFT. So, I can't buy one yet. You're from Amsterdam? Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Utrecht. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so these were all excellent points, right? And um, uh, it just was interesting because we were thinking, talking about real-world assets. Assets are 
wide array of potential things, right? You immediately spoke about real estate. Is it, when I, when I speak about real world assets, everyone's speaking about real estate? Thinking about real estate? Or are, are there maybe other things? Yeah, 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 no, good, good, good point. We will absolutely touch upon this. Um, any, any other assets that, that, that um, can be uh, represented by an NFTs uh, other than, uh, sorry? Skateboards. Skateboards. Cool, cool, cool. Watches. Watches, yeah, yeah. We also have uh, art, of course, and um, because of that, we have here uh, Mats, uh, CEO of Artbanks. Uh, Mats, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Matthias. Hello, everyone. My name is, uh, is Mats Thompson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of, uh, of Artbanks. And basically, what we have done is that we are basically crawling both transactional and non-transactional data of the art market because we have basically integrated all this data into a collection management system where basically we maintain and represent collectors' portfolio, essentially. So basically, we want to give them more information around the collection because the art market has, for many years, been very intransparent and therefore it's very important that we basically can give them this knowledge even though they're actors of the art market have been collecting art for many many years it's still very difficult to understand the different parameters regarding the growth rate of an art piece what is the actual risk when you're owning an art piece and how do you actually sell it and so all these factors is basically what we're trying to to help our community with and so one of the things that I was wondering about, because my normal audience is, of course, in the, in the art world. So is there anybody here today who actually owns physical art in the audience? Oh, there's actually a few. There's a few. Can I ask you what, what, kind, of, uh, what kind of art do you own? Uh, paintings. Paintings, yeah. Oh. Does it hold any, any secondary market value or is it directly from a gallery? Uh, I think there is one, but it's very small too. It's like niche. Okay. Do we have more collected art? I think there was a few down here also. So uh, can I ask you, you, uh, you yeah, collect, sure. what are you collecting? Uh, I have a bunch of paintings, both from like new emerging artists and some like established artists. Okay. So you also know a little bit about the, the secondary market, for an example, or is it mainly just from, from the galleries? I, I have some idea, not much, because I, none of the art that I bought over the years have, I mean, I never, I'm never thinking of selling them again. Okay. So it's just for collecting, basically. Okay. So I don't know the second market values. I know that they, some of them have, but I don't know how much because I'm not going to sell it anyway. So. <laughs> and, and this is actually a very common issue because you can actually own a lot of art. You do not know what exactly is, is the value of that art and how do, you, how do you resell it. But art is actually a great way of, of storing wealth, right? Because it appreciates quite well in value. But not only art, of course, you can also have alternative asset classes like cars or diamonds or Skateboard, as was mentioned. Watch, watches, like you mentioned. <laughs> what, watches as Skateboards well. Skateboards was a good one, yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was a new one, but yeah. I mean, essentially, it's, it's real world assets. So basically, one of the, the major requests that we got from our community was basically they would like to leverage that uh, art collection because essentially, as, as, as one of the audience down here, our community do not really want to sell that particular art piece because it appreciates so much and it's, again, it's a way to store wealth. So how could they basically leverage that existing investment? And this is what we are trying to achieve together with Allianz Block. So basically what we have created is what we call a buyback option. And that basically means that we basically put in the physical art piece, us as art banks, we take custody of that art piece, and we basically embedded this particular buyback options, which basically means that investors can buy in at a 4% expected return against the 50% of the market value. That basically means that you're buying it at half of the market price, meaning the probability of losing on investment is very, very low. Now, let's assume that this particular collector is not buying back this particular art piece. That basically means we are transferring the ownership over to the investors. And why do we do it in this constellation? We're basically doing it because there's a major demand from the collector side. There's a limited amount of access on retail investor side because right now you can, of course, democratize art, but you need to have a lot of knowledge in order to understand whether it's, it's going with 10%, 20% or whatever appreciating in value. But if you buy it at a discounted rate, it's already very appealing because then you're limited your risk because it's attached to this physical object. But it also involves a lot of difficult elements 
such as compliance? And I think, uh, Matthias, maybe this is something you could, uh, could tap a bit into. I, I, I mean, maybe to um, uh, go back really quickly, because there were two excellent questions or concerns actually uh, raised before about um, uh, real-world asset tokenization, right? One is around the fact, how do I know that um, uh, my, my NFT really represents this uh, real-world asset? And um, if uh, I transfer the NFT, is the ownership really transferred? Like, how, how do, um, uh, how, what are ways that we can deal with that? Yeah, I think actually it was a, was a great question. So, so basically what we're doing is that we are, we are working together with the free ports. And that basically means an art piece will always be stored in a free port, which is essentially a neutral party. So even though it's, it's an art bank's custody, it will always be verified by this third party, which essentially is the free port. You will always know that there is a physical object in this entire constellation. It's, of course, our obligation to make sure that we can preserve the value. But in a free port in itself, you have, you know, it's the most secure facilities in the world. It's, it's humidity controlled. They even take out uh, all the air in case of a fire. So it's a very very, very cure, uh, secure, secure place, yeah? yeah. Yeah, and this this shows like really one one important concept, right? Because um, I, I think what what we see a lot in the Web three industry, there's a lot of really cool ideas, and um, we 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 also really believe that this idea is really good. It's really cool, and um, with every fiber in our body, we always believe that this is um, uh, this is an important one to execute. But we are a DeFi infrastructure provider. We are not an art uh, specialist. You need to do this together um, with uh, someone that has the expertise, that has the network, and that, ha and, and that knows that you need to store it at specific humidity, that you need to have specific documents in order. Uh, otherwise, you have exactly these kind of problems. How, do you, how can you ensure that the ownership is really you know, uh, emb embedded in, in, uh, inside of the NFT? And, um, you know, there, there are also a, a couple of other problems. Um, if, if we think about compliance, um, are there any thoughts on, on, on compliance and tokenization of real-world assets? It's just a question or even a concern how you face all the legal aspects like no KYC with KYC and then because the legal side of things from selling NFTs, from selling real assets like art, it's very different and obviously changes from, from place to place. How you face this internationally and how are you based or where are you based somehow and how you attract even international or you are able to attract international investors or how you face all that? That's a very, very good and very fair question. And um, I, I will answer this part like technically and uh, he, he can answer more in depth um, with regards to jurisdictions. Um, so, like I said, um, we, we managed to build this protocol, and on top of that, we built Nexera ID, and Nexera ID allows uh, for, for, for users to create an identity in a, in, a, in a meta NFT, which essentially acts as a data container containing all the data activity and properties of uh, the user and the user's wallet. And it's not really about the wallet anymore, it's really about the user. And um, this means that um, uh, we can uh, have the user do KYC. We already have this process like, like done, it, it works. We've tried it already several times in, uh, in several use cases. The user can either share all his data publicly. The, the KYC verification, by the way, is between the user itself and the KYC verification provider. So we, we our banks doesn't see this data at that point. And it's for the user to, to, to encrypt this data and choose whether to share it with uh, the protocol that you're interacting with. And the protocol requests a certain amount of data, either as a, a zero knowledge proof, uh, which is basically an, an indicative value that can be uh, verified, whether it's above 18, yes or no, in, uh, from a white listed jurisdiction, yes or no, uh, but not really which jurisdiction, which age. Um, or uh, the raw uh, personal data uh, at, at the level that is needed um, that can be shared directly between the user and uh, the, 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 the protocol that integrates Nexera ID, in this case, uh, Artbanks. And w with all this data or around this data, we can program business rules that allow you to um, uh, set specific compliance rules that um, uh, work in, 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 uh, inside of the workflow that we set out for the, for the use case. That means that if you have 
um, if you have an NFT that represents the art piece, and this NFT is fractionalized, and um, each uh, lender that, that, that owns the fraction of this NFT doesn't want to wait for the loan to mature or the buyback option to mature. They want to go, um, uh, they want to liquidate it and uh, uh, trade it on a secondary market. Because of these business rules, these transfers then only execute it if the receiving wallet also has these KYC properties that we programmed inside of the business rules. So technically, that's how we ensure that um, uh, well, with any kind of growing uh, uh, regu regulatory rules in whatever jurisdiction, they can be programmed additionally um, it's, uh, and, and, and extended or modified to comply uh, with jurisdictions. And if we don't know how to handle a jurisdiction, you can just block it out. Yeah, I think from, from the art side, just to, to answer the question as well, uh, basically we are not trading securities at this stage. We are based in, in Switzerland and we wanted to avoid to trade securities. So we basically base it on what is called a possession order. And that basically means we're representing both uh, the seller and the buyer. And that basically creates an ideal environment. But of course, there is some, some complication when it comes to, to US because it's not completely identified yet. Uh, but at least in, in Europe, we are quite safe with, uh, with our constellation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and any other concerns around um, ar around this topic? So you were talking about that the art is contained by by a third party. <clears throat> so how you work with some people that they want to keep their art, you know, and still be in the in the market, right? Knowing the price of the art and how you manage that that part also to know also that the art arrived and is the the correct piece of art, you know, because it can be a forgery or something. Yeah, good question. Maybe I take this one. This is a, that's a great question because actually there's an entire due diligence process evolving art. So one thing, of course, the compliant part when it comes to KYC and wallet. Another element is, of course, you have the valuation of the art piece, first of all. So before we engage with any, any potential customer, we basically go in and see, does it hold any potential value to basically be placed on the platform? That's the first step. The second step is basically to go in and identify, is it in the catalog raisonné? The catalog raisonné is basically referred to in the art world as being like the, 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 the state of authenticity. So to say. So we're not touching anything which is not in the catalog resume because already there there will be a mismatch. Additionally, in the free ports, there's a lot of scanning companies and that basically means you can duplicate what is already existing to be genuine and you basically place the two layers on top of each other and then you can basically verify that. But we do also have some of the leading experts in my company, so we also do, of course, an uh, in-person in inspection of that very, uh, very art piece. But essentially, the most important thing is the custody, which is the free ports because you need to have a neutral party because I'm not asking people to trust only art banks exclusively because it will be too centralized. But when we have a, a third party involved, such as a free port, which basically is where all the art today more or less is, is stored, I believe you have several of hundred billions in, in Geneva free port alone, uh, that becomes a bit more credible. And of course, we also share the entire inventory list so you can see there is a particular art piece in that free port. There is an insurance also on that particular art piece that everything is connected to it. So there's not really any particular risk in, in you can You can see you can see all these documents, right? When you, uh, before you Invest, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So this 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 shows that this process it requires attention from both the technical perspective, compliance perspective, but also really the the the, the expertise um, is very important. Like we couldn't pull this off um, without all this knowledge about what kind of documentation is needed, how is ownership defined, you know, what kind of jurisdictions have which rules. Like we're not a legal expert, we're not an art expert. Um, so, so it's important, you know, if you work on things like this, to 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 have kind of this collab collaborative approach um, in, in in order to do this. And this this is why I think um, why why I believe that this works really well. If I just may add something also, because when we're talking about tokenization of real world asset. When I'm looking at it, because I'm coming, of course, from, from, from the art world, uh, but I have to understand what is the, the advantage of an art collector today to tokenize his art piece? Because essentially, if he's just selling fraction of that art piece, it doesn't bring him any value. Why? Because he can just sell it on the private market. He can sell it over an auction. So why should he spend his time on fractionalize it? Now, so what are these collectors actually looking for? And in our case, a lot of them are just looking to extract liquidity. Well, that creates a perfect opportunity now because now there is a certain need from a collector, right? And this cannot be met today in the financial sector because art is not a bankable asset class. So that opens up to a major, major opportunity to participate at a discounted rate in the art market. 
But the, the great thing here about collectible is it does not only count for, for art, of course, it counts for, for cars, for, for watches, for skateboards, for basically, basically everything which, which has a physical object to it. But what are the needs of those who actually own that piece, those pieces today? Because the art market is, is mostly known to be owned by the, the wealthy individuals and untouched by us regular individuals. So how could we basically be part of this entire ecosystem? So I think the solution we came up with, basically based on financing, is really a good use case because it maps the best of, of both worlds. And I think this is, this is really what it's all about when you want to, to, to tokenize real world assets. Absolutely. Is there a need on both sides and how does that look like? So I really think that this and, is and, and it's a very, uh, very common problem, right? A very common situation where high net worth individuals are asset rich and cash poor. Like your wealth might be really, uh, really big. Um, doesn't mean that you have easy access to liquidity. And um, this is the perfect use case to get this liquidity um, uh, for, uh, for collectors, for high net worth individuals. But at the same time, bringing it to Web3, bring the inclusivity that the Web3 community um, uh, has, that any retail investor with a uh, low enough amount can participate in, uh, in his use case. Um, and, 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 and still have um, kind of a stable yield. Like this is not, this is not a meme coin, right? So this is not gonna generate um, a five, 500X. And uh, well, thank God, right? Because uh, we don't need any, any more of that. But this is gonna be um, a more stable. Art is not as volatile, right? And um, as, as Mats mentioned beautifully before, don't forget there is a 50% loan to value rate, which means that only 50% of the art is putting as, uh, as, as collateral uh, of the value, which means that um, uh, when, when, when it defaults, when it's not being bought back, um, you indeed, you have a lot of upside. So instead of you know, not being able to buy back the piece uh, is being seen as a risk, um, you know, maybe some investors actually hope for this, right? Um, so this is uh, this is very interesting. So we we we, we touch upon uh, compliance to be to be really important uh, in this uh, in this sense. The knowledge of um, uh, the, the the Web three world, the art world, um, and I, I think there is there is there may be a couple of uh, uh, few more things that we can touch upon that that are really relevant, uh, especially in this use case. We, what we speak about is like top tier art, right? Um, I, I cannot pronounce all the artists' <laughs> names, but we, we, we think about the level of like basically Picasso, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so all of our, or, or not all of our, our collectors, but a lot of them they have, you know, Picasso, Modigliani, or whatever. But of course, all of them they also have regular art. And when I say regular art, we talk a couple of hundred thousand. Um, but but normally, uh, what's common is that you can basically take an entire collection and you can collateralize it, and then you can basically uh, uh, lend against or get funds against this particular collection, and this creates a, a major upside for retail investors again because it's not bank. Bankable. And the funny thing about art not being bankable, not to go too deep into the topic, is basically if you look at the data, artists outperform almost any other asset class. So how can it be that, that art is not a bankable asset class yet, right? Because the data implies that, hey, this is a pretty safe. You <laughs> need the expertise. This is it, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, the, um, uh, what I was trying to say, like, if you deal with top tier art, you also need a lot of liquidity. And um, if you need a lot of liquidity and if you look at retail, um, you need adoption, you need sufficient adoption. And um, I think this is still, still a common problem. Like, like are, are there any thoughts around uh, the topic of adoption um, and, and accessibility uh, around retail users, maybe? So I think that mm, a lot of retail users, they don't know about the technology and they don't understand what they are actually buying and also a lot of problems, I think I'm more in the real estate, um, is that even if you tokenize a house or something, then the property you need to go to the government anyway. So there is the part like it's still like really old and it's something missing between there. I think that is the part that we need to focus on. Yeah. So things like uh, wallets, uh, transactions, uh Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. This is specifically real estate, right? Yeah. True. True. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, and, and this again, I think it, it iterates and underlines really um, again how important it is to have the specific uh, expertise on board if you tackle a use case like this. You okay. know, because in, in what trees really common to just start building and uh, we'll see what will happen and we will, we will see if we find a solution to a problem that we made up. Can, and, can uh, I just add something here uh, to, to, to what you just mentioned regarding the government? The, the thing is that in regular art lending, so to say, we are not doing lending, we are doing an option, which is more attractive for an investor. But in regular art lending, the difficulties is often that uh, the collector actually very often defaults. He do not buy, buy back uh, the art piece, he do not repay his loan. And it essentially ends up in, in, in what is a messy lawsuit, <laughs> right? And, and so what we have tried to create now with, with blockchain and, and with LA Young's block is basically we are transferring the ownership because then there cannot be any claim afterwards because it's already embedded in the smart contract. So we don't have the sim similar issues and that's also why lenders from, from the art industry, they think it's very, very appealing to basically interact now with, with blockchain technology in specific because you can basically transfer ownership in a more efficient way. If we're talking about real estate, you're absolutely right, something completely different, but, but for Collectible uh, assets, it's, it's, it's very different. Eh? So, yeah, sorry. No, I, I, I think one another really important factor is the fact that, uh, you know, if we speak about users and the potential lack of understanding on how to participate in, in a use case like this, I think, you know, a lot of people want to say that, you know, they, they owned a piece of Picasso or uh, Monet or something like that. Um, but how can they um, uh, how how can they achieve this if they have to install MetaWas MetaMask wallet, uh, to, uh, keep their private key safe, uh, which a lot of people they cannot even keep their passport password safe, right? And um, how to deal with the transaction uh, top up transaction fees on ramping and off ramping? It's all very hard, right? Um, so I think w w one of the key um, uh, key drivers uh, towards success is also lowering this barrier um, by um, uh, you know dealing with account abstraction, um, uh, offer like Web two best practices in a Web three um, uh, environment without compromising the Web three ideologies, right? So we can offer. Uh, things like two-factor authentication, single sign login with social login, um, uh, but still keep everything on-chain, keep everything in self-custody solution, uh, which means that it's, it's recognizable for uh, retail users that are not familiar with the Web3 standards um, uh, so that they can still participate in, 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 in use cases like this. So, um, uh, for because I, I understand that we're running towards the end, um, are, are there uh, are there any questions? Any uh, any concerns, maybe? What's the best way to reach out to you guys and to work with you or to participate on art banks? Yeah, so, um, cool question. Yeah, so, so Ra Random audience member. <laughs> <laughs> So, so basically, as you can see here in the back, you can, you can scan the, the QR code to reach out to us directly, or you can also meet with us afterwards or go into our website on artbanks.io. The new project regarding tokenization is called Archify, archify.com. And this is basically where we want to drive all, all the, the collectors that we already represent on artbanks over to basically democratize the investment opportunity. So we basically want to separate the two worlds, but at the same time, merge them together. But we will do that over a new platform. The QR code works pretty well. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely check it. Opens the link tree uh, page, I believe, uh, that allows you to see the Archify website, Alliance Block and Art Banks. Um, and I really welcome you uh, there. Um, thank you very much. It was actually a good turn up, and I really loved um, all the questions and input. Uh, that was actually really cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.